Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, wish you all a very happy feast of the ascension of the Lord. Good Friday was not the end of the life of Jesus, not even the Easter Sunday of the resurrection. Jesus goes to the house of the Father. He comes to sit at the right hand of the Father. His destination was the side of the Father. That gives meaning even to our small destinations, for they should all find their ultimate destination by the side of the Father. The solemnity of the ascension of the Lord reminds us of this destination that all of us have. It tells us that we should all live in view of that great destiny. It's usually said that he who has a view of the goal of life knows how to reach that goal. It is in view of the goal of our life that our actions in life assume their meaning. As for a student, his or her goal is to procure a good result at the end of the studies. Therefore, the student will arrange his or her schedule in such a way as to achieve that goal. He who is in the sports field will naturally train himself, especially his body, to achieve the end desired. The Feast of the Ascension of the Lord tells us that as Christians we should live conscious of our joyful destiny. Easter and the Paschal Tide are occasions in which we reflect deeply of our destination in life. Jesus is risen. Jesus lives. Jesus has won over death. The tomb of Jesus is empty. The angels send the women come to the tomb to the disciples to announce them of the good news of the resurrection of the Lord. Thus our lives have become meaningful. At the end of our life we shall enter the house of the Father with the good experiences of life and even with the trials that we have experienced so that everything will find its fulfillment there in the home of the Father. In the solemnity of the ascension of the Lord we are celebrating the good news of the goal of our life. We have been born for eternal life. The dignity of our life before God is great. In the second reading that we hear today, Paul the Apostle makes this aspect clear. By the way, there is a choice for the second reading today. It could be either from the letter to Hebrews or from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. From Ephesians, it is chapter 1, verse 17 to 23. Here, Paul depicts beautifully of the hope that we all have. Verses 17 to 20 read thus, May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and perception of what is revealed, to bring you to full knowledge of Him. May He enlighten the eyes of your mind, so that you can see what hope this call holds for you. How rich is the glory of the heritage he offers among his holy people and how extraordinarily great is the power that he has exercised for us believers. This accords with the strength of his power at work in Christ, the power which he exercised in raising him from the dead and enthroning him at his right hand in heaven. Hence, this is a message of great hope. God has done marvelous things for us. What God has done for Christ, He will also do for us. Moreover, the Feast of Ascension tells us of the invisible presence of the Lord among us. The Gospel passage of today indicates this. The pericop is Luke chapter 24, verses 46 to 53. Jesus will be present among us in different ways. He will be present among us through His Spirit. He told His disciples, And now I am sending upon you what the Father has promised. Stay in the city, then until you are clothed with the power from on high. This is verse 49 of chapter 24. Jesus is present among us also through the Eucharistic species. When we gather for the Eucharistic celebration, He is in our midst. So also when we read the scriptures and when we interpret the scriptures, He is present in our midst. The story of the disciples who walked to Emmaus is what precedes today's gospel passage. Through that story we come to know that Jesus will be with us when we share our bread with others. Those two disciples were ready to share their house 
and they bred with the stranger who joined with them on their journey it was then when they were sharing they bred with him that they recognized the stranger their eyes were opened then this is primarily the reason why pope francis has been asking us continuously to turn our eyes to the needy ones it's only when we turn to the ones in the periphery or the margins that we will be able to experience the presence of the hidden one there we will then have a glimpse of the one who is gloriously seated at the right hand of the father the first reading of today is also significant in this regard it's taken from acts chapter 1 verses 1 to 11 to the disciples who were looking intently at the sky the angels dressed in white asked why are you galileans standing here looking into the sky they had to look to earth below although they know that their destination is the side of the father they should now give witness to the destiny of human life that has been fulfilled through the person of jesus of nazareth jesus told them that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all nations beginning from jerusalem this is luke chapter 24 verse 47 and that is good news the gospel Jesus went up from them extending his hands in blessing over them. Luke chapter 24 verses 50 and 51 read thus. Then he took them out as far as the outskirts of Bethany and raising his hands he blessed them. Now as he blessed them he withdrew from them and was carried up to heaven. The recipients of that blessing are not just the disciples but all of us. The risen Lord's hands in blessing are raised upon us all even now. Therefore, we have the possibility of living in hope. That is the beauty of Christian life. The reaction of the disciples at the ascension of the Lord is significant as described here in the gospel. Luke chapter 24 verses 52 and 53 say thus. They worshipped him and they went back to Jerusalem full of joy. and they were continually in the temple praising god interestingly in this gospel it's now that the disciples are said to be praising god in joy in this gospel there are several locations in which different people praise god out of joy zachariah virgin mary and simeon the old man sing in joy praising god the recipients of jesus miracles and the crowd glorify god in joy for instance in chapter 7 verse 16 chapter 13 verse 13 chapter 17 verse 15 and chapter 18 verse 43 now the disciples rejoice and praise god although the physical presence of jesus is no longer there they are joyful to praise god because they are sure of his invisible presence among them they also had the hope that they would reach his side eventually Dear friends, the feast of the ascension of the Lord gives us the right orientation to our lives. We can live here on earth doing good in the hope of the fulfillment of our life by the side of the Father. We will surely have the invisible presence of Jesus beside us to guide and bless us. Amen.